Where the fuck is he? What in the... Hey. You have to record. Mm. Mm. Get up. Mm. What's wrong with you? Uh, it's just this game is so boring. You no, know, actually, I don't care. Just record so I can go back to sleep for six days. Let's <sighs> talk! When you're in a PC, let's rock! When you depend on me, to give you weapons, weapons items, armor, information, and the journey, and still use the machine to try to hurt me. Let's talk! When you're in a PC, let's rock! So, today we're going to look at dogs in the vineyard. And I'm sorry, but I just can't muster up the energy. This is a game that has earned some internet credibility after the DM from Geek and Sundry's Critical Role, Matt Mercer, appeared on a playthrough on YouTube from a show called Roleplay. The video received 70,000 views, one of the highest videos for that person, and I think a lot of it can definitely be thanked for Matt Mercer's credibility and charisma. I mean, look at this gentleman. That is a sexy pile of nerd charisma right there. Let's be honest here. Matt Mercer's charm, his credibility, his charisma, all of that can definitely sell a lot of things. It can also especially sell a substandard game as pretty good. Okay, listen, I'm going to throw up my hands here and say that I completely understand that this might be a personal issue for this game. It may just be me, and that my preferences are just such that I cannot get behind this game. I admit it, this one might be personal, and I just can't look past the things that annoy me for what is, by all accounts, or what could be, a great game. I mean, then again, whenever you struggle to get through the book because you are so disinterested, that can also be a problem, too. Look at last week, though. I even admitted that I am not the hugest fan of Game of Thrones or follow it religiously, but I did not once find the book boring whenever I was reading through it. But man, this one was rough. I admit, though, that if a fan of this sort of setting and this sort of thing find this, they could really have a lot of fun with this game. They could really take it and run with it. But man, is it rough to get through. Dogs in the Vineyard is a game that is just a little too niche. It seems like that it's one of those games that really only speaks to a very small group of people and can't really extend outside of its niche zone that was admittedly boosted quite a bit by one of the biggest nerd personalities in existence. So what is Dogs in the Vineyard? Well, it is a story based around a western fantasy premise. You take on the role of God's soldiers in a rough and tumble part of a fictionalized American Southwest around the 19th century. You travel from town to town with a different goal in mind, Protect the will of God from the hostile world. I mean, I'm surprised that more people are not just flocking to this thing. I have to admit the setting itself is pretty cool. The American West during the 19th century is ripe for tinkering with. Just look at Deadlands for proof positive of that. But man, does this game pigeonhole itself so quickly. 
The characters just aren't engaging for me, and this is a problem. Whenever you create a role-playing game, you want to reach as many people as possible. This game is tailor-made for a very specific person in mind. This is the cleric. This is the person who wants to be God's warrior. For instance, it's like if D&D, the only playable character, was the cleric class. You just pigeonhole yourself so quickly into a very niche market that anyone who does not want to be one of God's chosen is left out in the cold and has nothing to play. For instance, like myself, I just do not want to play one of God's warriors, but I am stuck in that role in this game with an admittedly really cool premise. The setting of 19th century western rough and tumble world is fun and all, but do you really want to play the western equivalent of the Spanish Inquisition in order to play? Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! It's just a bland concept to me that is made no better by the fact that the game's book itself is really boring as well. This is a similar complaint that I had with Blood a while back, but the book just isn't selling it and you need to sell it. While the fact that the interior of the book gives off the very feeling and vibe of a hymnal or a biblical-like book with its writing, its tone, especially its font, the problem is, is that it gives off the same feeling as reading a hymnal or a biblical text as well. That it's not really fun or engaging, it's supposed to be spiritual. So whenever you have a role-playing game, it just doesn't work out. The artwork doesn't help much either. It's very minimalistic, it's very small, and the black and white just gives off more of a bland tone. This really is a rough one to call, primarily because the game's dice system is one of the most inspired I've seen in quite some time. Really, the creators of this game created a very inspirational dice system that you honestly should at least pick up this book and look through it. It's great, and I would love to see this dice system work with other settings. So, how am I going to call this game? Honestly... It's really, really easy. This is rough. This is rough because I know that there are people out there that like the setting, that are really going to enjoy it. But ultimately, I am going to have to give this game a miss. And I'll be honest here, a lot of the reason why this game is really good is from the Matt Mercer game that he played with Roleplay. Honestly, I really suggest that you look up Roleplay and watch that video. It's very entertaining, and it's the way that the game should be run. But after watching the video, after reading the book, after thinking of all the possibilities in my head, I have to say that that video with Matt Mercer on Roleplay is really the exception to the rule. It is a really great game that they played in an otherwise substandard role-playing game experience. So with that being said, I actually have an announcement to make for this episode of Critter Miss, and it pertains to Gen Con. So to all of the people watching this, if you are going to Gen Con, I suggest you check out the Project Derailed Critter Party. That's right, if you're a fan of Geek and Sundry, if you're a fan of Matt Mercer, if you're a fan of their smash hit critical role, then you definitely need to check out this Critter Party. It is a fan style experience in which the people from Project Derailed, my good friends Nick Rusiva, Fiona Kelly, and Tom Goldthwait, are going to be throwing a big bash at the place social. And the people who do my intro, 2D6, will also be performing as well. And it's just supposed to be a big smash hit that is supposed to really give a great fan experience for such a loyal fan base. So please, if you consider yourself a critter, and also if you follow this and you like what we do at ProjectDerail.com, I suggest that you go to Gen Con and you check out the Critter Party, thrown by yours truly, Project Derailed.